guys, it's Reenactment Day here, and in this video I'm going to be covering what the U.S. soldier would be issued in 1942. This is going to be part two of a five-part series. I did 1941 already. I'll be doing, this is 1942, and I'll be covering 1943, 1944, and 1945. Now, later, I'm not, I don't have the Model 1944 pack, and I still have the Haversack, which was also seen, so we'll cover that later in the other video. Um, so, let's start off. I am currently wearing the, well, 1937 wool uniform. Now, this was seen throughout the entire war, and this was just a very, uh, standard uniform. This was the dress uniform. You button up the top and you wrap it with a tie. That's a Class B. And with the tie and the, uh, serge jacket or the Ike jacket, that would be a Class A. So, you can see right here, shirt, pants underneath. I got a green t-shirt. Could be also a white t-shirt, that's up to you. We got the standard uh, U.S. Army trouser belt. And you can see just, it's a standard wool uniform like we've covered in the videos before. Now, like in the normal fashion, I'm going to move down and show you the footwear, and then I'll move back up and cover the field jackets and the field gear and the headwear. So, let us get to that. Alright, now as you can see, Away with the Type 2 service shoe, and now we have the Type 3, also known as the Rough Out service shoe. You can see they're not shiny, they're more dull, and because the rough side is out, that's the name Rough Out, uh, they are a lot easier to dub, and this makes them more waterproof. You don't gotta worry about them getting scratched. And on the bottom, of the shoe, you can see the rubber sole goes all the way through without that gap in the middle. So this makes it a lot better as for a combat boot. And as you can see with the boot, we got the small 1938 leggings going up. So that is it. Now we're gonna move up and cover field jackets and field gear. All right, now that we got footwear out of the way, we got the small 1941 field jacket. Very nice ja field jacket, has a nice liner on the inside. The liner is terrible for winter, but it's great for spring and fall. So, throw this jacket on. You can see this jacket tightens up at the wrists, just like the shirt. And you can see it goes down to about the belt. And this jacket has a zipper, which is pretty rare for World War II items. It's a nice zipper. It's also tight, has a few buttons around the bottom to tighten up. And yeah, got the like th two third way up zipper, and then the rest is just buttons. Now, like I said, this thing can button all the way up, and there's even a few buttons on the collar so you can pop the collar up and wrap it around your neck but that was very rarely seen done so we'll get the uniform all straight and we'll move up to the field pack so field pack you can see we got the well, 1905 bayonet still um, wood handles they could be Bakelite handles along with this this could be the um, more fiberglass fiberglasses material. I'm not too sure about the material. I always forget it. But or you could also see just the World War One canvas scabbard, the Model 1910. But Model 1905 bayonet, Model 1928 haversack, Model 1923 cartridge belt. Um, we got the first aid uh, pouch right here. We got the Model 1910 uh, canteen right here. And I, as you can see. This is the aluminum cap, or the plastic cap canteen, the Bakelite cap, plastic cap. And this this was the one thing that they really changed about the Model 1910 canteen, is they switched from the aluminum cap to the plastic cap, because it was just better, and you'd save aluminum for more canteens or aircraft or items like that. You can see everything's a, still an OD3 kind of khaki color. You got the Model 1910 T-handle shovel in the carrier on the back and 
that's pretty much the haversack. Now it goes on like it we've gone before, normal backpack. And the belt just twists into place like there. So standard field gear like we've covered in many many times before in the video. So field gear. And next what they would be issued is the um, the gas mask bag, kidney bag they call it. The lightweight gas mask bag would not come out until later war. But just throw this thing over the shoulder. Now if you were in combat it would be fairly often that these got that the GIs would just dispose of this bag, throw it away, because it's big, it's bulky, and it's in the way. So very often that they would just throw it away. So you just gotta I like, get the hook. It's hard to see because it's all underneath the field gear stuff. Alright, you tighten that down, and you can see it's a big bulky gas mess bag that's right in the way. Now, moving to headwear, we got the Mall 19, for early war, or early the year, we got the Mall 1917A1 Kelly helmet liner, or the helmet in general. This was the World War I shell or a new production shell with the new uh, liner. The liner was actually a bit inferior, but it was easier to make. And, but the chin strap was a bit better because it's this nice canvas hook system that you see on the M1. And, how it goes on is, you know, normal helmet, chin strap, goes on like that. Liner is not too adjustable, but it is somewhat adjustable. Um, the liner in this, not the most comfortable either. The World War One liner was considered better and more comfortable for the GIs, but this one could be replaced easier and is a little bit more adjustable. So we removed this helmet because probably uh, mid-war to or mid-1942 uh, to late-42 they came up at, well this was already in design but they increased the uh, production rate of the M1 steel pot helmet. After we got into a few combat scenarios we didn't want guys running around with this helmet we wanted them running around with this because while this is good for the trenches because all the shrapnel is coming in from above modern warfare would be more out of the trenches on the field and they need something to protect more of the head like the German Stadion. So we have the M1 steel pot helmet. Now while uh, this part, this liner, you can replace the entire liner at, but um, you'd also have to replace the aluminum frame and there's also a screw holding in the liner. This, li this helmet with the liner is a removable simple liner and it is held in by this chin strap. This is really not a chin strap it is a it's just strap to hold in the uh, liner but the this was uh, it was seen being worn as a chin strap during like parades and stuff but the main purpose of it was to hold it into the shell and in the liner this would liner is not the most accurate for this time period it's not really that accurate it would be more made out of a fiber fiberglass or a um, no, this is fiberglass, a uh, paperish cardboard material, and it would often fall apart. It wasn't the strongest, so they replaced it with this fiberglass liner later war. But because I do not have one of the um, uh, paper ones, because they're really rare and really expensive, like I'm talking like three hundred dollars for one liner. Um, we got the actual fiberglass liner in here, but most of the system is the same. All these parts in here, except for this main suspension, is replaceable. You can pop this chin strap out with these two little hooks on each side. Nape strap, buttons, four buttons, just, you can pull it right off. The um, chin strap has clips going around the entire way. Or not chin strap, uh, sweatband. That you can just pull out and replace when this gets old and rotten. Um, this cord in the middle can also be replaced, but the actual main suspension would actually would be needed to sent back to be replaced. Um, chin strap is sewn onto the actual helmet shell and cannot be replaced with ease. You would have to probably send this back to actually have the chap, uh, strap sewn back on, or at least sent to your quartermaster. So the actual helmet shell is accurate for the time. Front seam fixed bail, which means the bales are welded into place and they don't swivel at all. 
they were they often snapped off, so they were replaced with the swivel bail, but this is a fixed bail helmet. So it goes on. You can see it covers more of the helmet. The liner is a lot better, a lot more comfortable, and a good blow to the head, you'll barely even feel it. So that helped protect guys from getting concussions, from blasts in the smooth or the rounded surfaces, protecting down to like near the ears, about halfway down the ears, would protect the guys from shrapnel. Pretty much here down. But the rest of the rest of the body is good luck, but the head protections the really the main importance. And and beginning of nineteen forty two you would still often see the see the well nineteen oh three Springfield. But later war they would have the M1 Garand. I do not have a like fake Garand to show on camera. I don't got a Denix. I plan to get one pretty soon. Mine my repro kinda one that I made out of wood is falling apart. But what I got right now is this uh, somewhat fake rifle. It has a real barrel on it, but it's plugged. Real stock, so it's a drill rifle, I'd say. Gotta get the bolt. Uh, but for now, this is what I got. So, this rifle was also seen throughout the entire war anyway, so still accurate. So, that is going to be it for this video. I uh, hope you found this informational. If you want to do this impression, hope you found it helpful. If you have any uh, ideas for any videos, please them down in the comments. I'll try and get to them. It's appreciated if you leave some because I'm running out of video ideas. <laughs> um, still got to do a lot, like redo a lot of videos. A lot of my videos are either outdated, outdated information, or it has that bright orange light because I was using just a, the normal light bulbs before I went out and purchased just some LED ones, as you can see. Um, so I, they either have like an orange filter over them for some reason, or they or they are just outdated. So I'll you'll see some old videos get redone. So that's probably going to be a lot of the videos you see coming out. But watch them because there's more information on it, and probably more gear because my collection has increased. But um, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. Uh, that and thanks for watching. I'll see you see you guys later.